Hi, I'm Shannon Nelson. With me today, Canadian actor Tom O'Pennicott. Buckminster and his father are fundamentalists. Tom O'Pennicott has strong ties to the Upper Tenana tribe in the Yukon through his mother, and their traditions are deeply imprinted on his psyche. Through his acting, Tamo is able to continue his family's long tradition of storytelling, and he's particularly convincing in his role as Hilo on Battlestar Galactica. Beautiful sounding name, interesting name. You gotta tell me about it. Um, it's uh, First Nation, my grandmother named me, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm part First Nation, I'm part uh, Upper Tenana. And uh, uh, it's, it's pronounced, if you said it like my parents said it, or, you know, it's my grandmother used to say it, it's Tatmo. But it's Do become that again. Tatmo. Because it's T-A-H-M-O-H. -H. Right. Yeah, Tatmo. So there's a bit of a break. Isn't mm -hmm. it? Huh. Yeah. My and grandmother, you, you, in her, uh, her uh, upper tan in a language, I mean, her accent was, it was, uh, it was very unique. And she used to, it was almost like a song. Every time she'd say it, she'd be like, oh, Tatmo. She'd separate it completely. Is it is it um, typical or traditional that that the grandmother would name the grandson? Um, I think it it would be. It could be, especially with the upper Tanana. I mean, our people in that area of Alaska. Uh, my grandmother was a matriarch, but I think uh, my father um, has always been fascinated by uh, the uh, the people up there, the First Nation people, and I think he asked my grandmother, and she, of course, obliged right away. Wow. So the meaning of the name. Um, yeah, I haven't really told anybody that yet. The next time we meet, I'll tell you. I gotta get oh, to know you a bit more. Oh, I'm intrigued. Yeah, it's one of those things my grandmother told me. And is it something that you, is it sort of something that you're supposed to keep to yourself? It could or? be, it could be. It could be just a joke I'm playing on people, but <laughs> I don't really tell the the, uh, the meaning of the name. Oh. Um, okay, well, I can respect that. Yeah. It's a private thing. Yeah. Maybe when we go for a drink sometime, you'll let me know. Yeah, well, I can tell you this. I was named after my great uncle. Um, my grandmother's uncle, and uh, he was a great uh, hunter and trapper up there, so. Right. Now, you're a Yukon boy. I am. Born and raised. Yeah, and a, a lot of us who are f from more southern parts, I'm from Prince Rupert, so, mm -hmm. but that's all vastly different from the Yukon. Tell us what it's like, kind of paint a picture of what it's like for a young boy growing up in a place like that. Um... Growing up in a place like that, I mean, obviously I didn't know much difference. We, um, my father's parents lived in BC, so I had always had the opportunity to come down to BC and, and visit a lot. I spent some time in Vancouver and, and uh, Victoria and on the island and stuff. But growing up in the Yukon, I mean... It's cold and It's very cold. It's very different. You know, it's, it's, you know it's, it's a magical place. It really is. It's very different. It's, um, it's wild. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing about Yukoners is... I mean, there's, there's 30,000 of us surrounded by, you know, vast wilderness and wildlife. And you, you never forget that, mm -hmm. regardless. I mean, I lived in the largest community, which is probably about 75% of the population. You know, when I was a kid, there was only 12,000 people in the Yukon. By the time I was in high school, there was about 26. I don't think most people know that, how yeah. sparsely populated it's it is. It's very sparsely populated, but there's, there's tons of small communities, and each one just has a very small population. Mm -hmm. But, we, you know, with tremendous histories, you know. Mm -hmm. Whether it be uh, some of the communities, you know, the, the you know, old First Nation settlements or, you know, for instance, a place like Dawson, which, of course, has the, uh, the gold rush history. And big city. Big city. I mean, at the time, I know at the, uh, the peak of the gold rush and the, uh, the turn of, uh, you know, like 1898 or what have you, it was the second biggest city in Canada mm -hmm. and like 40,000 people. Well, we were all looking for gold. Yeah, and you've had some <laughs> famous people come out of there, Pierre Burton and, you know, famous writers like Jack London and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it was great. I loved growing up there. You know, I got the best of both worlds, right? My father's British and my... Uh, so he's not First Nations? No, not at all. My father's British. He came over when he was 12 years old. And I think the reason they came over is my father, or my grandfather was, um, his father was a, uh, a pilot in the RAF. And uh, he was actually training Canadian uh, pilots on the island. He was flown over during the war, mm -hmm. and he fell in love with Victoria and always planned on moving back there hmm. after the war, so. And wasn't your grandfather also an actor? He was. My grandfather, well, yeah, I think he was in school. He was in school. He was, uh, you know, he did, uh, he did Shakespeare like, like a lot of them. He was a thespian. Uh, it's, it's passed down to the family. My, uh, my dad even did uh, something crazy, like 30 productions in three years while he was at uh, Western Ontario. Wow. And then he even had an acting troupe in Edmonton called the... Uh, the compact six. So it's in the blood. It's in the blood, a little bit. And, you know, 
I mean, it comes from the other side of the family, too. My, my grandmother was a great storyteller, yeah. so I've always appreciated the art. So have you, um, well, I guess in, in acting, you are, in fact, telling a story. <clears throat> Absolutely, yeah. We're just part of the, uh, the whole machine that works together. I mean, I, that's, that's what I am. I'm a storyteller. You have to enjoy telling a story. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now your father wasn't just, you know, um, your average Yukoner. Because he was also the premier, was he not? Yes, he was. So what was it like to grow up as, you know, part of a very small group, but also, I'm sure everybody in the Yukon knew your dad. Yeah, they did. Well, and did they know you? Place. Uh, I, I'm sure they did, I'm sure they did, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, growing up with my dad in politics, you know, when I was young, he was, I think he was the only NDP MLA and the first one in the Yukon. So that was new at the time, but within a few years, he, uh, he was the leader of the party, and then he had a bunch of other members, a bunch of uh, MLA uh, 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 NDPers, and you know, within a few years, they, uh, they actually became government, and I think they got two terms in there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, you get recognizable, but the thing about the North, it's such a small community anyway. You know, people yeah. are not that far separated. No. You know, everyone pretty much knows each other. There's not the big gulf like there is when you live, you know, in a big city, like living in the south. I mean, we might never see exactly. the premier in our entire lives. Exactly. Whereas when you live in the Yukon, you probably see the guy in the coffee shop. We're at the coffee shop. We're downtown. <laughs> I mean, it's a town of 26,000 people, right? It's not very big, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I, I think, you know, uh, one of the compromises you have to make, of course, is that, uh, you know, the, the, my dad was a workaholic. He worked 12 hours a day for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, is that any time we, we were out, we got to spend time with our fathers, anybody who saw them also felt that th this was their time to talk politics with them, right? Yeah. So we were being approached at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever get them much to yourself? Um, well, I'll tell you one thing that my father and I always did, uh, ever since I was really young, and I think it gave me an appreciation of film, uh, dramas, movies, what have you, is my dad's always loved movies. And ever since I was really young, he'd take me to, to, uh, to the movies, especially on Sundays, you know, on the weekends, we do uh, we do a big hot springs day. We go out to the hot springs, and he spend the day with uh, my sisters and I there, and then uh, we go to movies. And I'd hear him critique them afterwards too. So.